The next uh, uh, presentation is about the restoration of uh, the Hungarian military force. Uh, uh, when you look at uh, the Treaty of uh, Trianon, you can see the, uh, very detailed, uh, but the most detailed uh, provisions refer to the Hungarian military force. So now let's listen to Professor Sandor Sakai's presentation on the creation of an independent Hungarian military force between 1919 and 1922. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, talking about military force uh, in the case uh, of a country uh, uh, where uh, uh, there is problem with uh, the continuity of the law, a country which lost two-thirds of its territory, uh, is very difficult. Uh, um, uh, the independent Hungarian military force was created in 1918. Uh, the consolidation provided an opportunity for the ruler uh, to uh, abandon um, in a sort of way uh, uh, the area of the military. Mm. Uh, as an Aust Austrian emperor, uh, uh, the king uh, controlled the Austrian military force, uh, but uh, an independent Hungarian force, force was also established, and of course they were jointly managed. The First World War changed uh, the situation. Uh, um, armament uh, was uh, massive, but after the loss of the war, the situation dramatically changed. Uh, there were Hungarian uh, military forces within the army, and uh, 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 the joint and uh, the Hungarian uh, units, uh, 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 which were the most uh, frequent, usually did not recruit people of Hungarian origin, but we can see soldiers from Croatian, Serbian, etc. Uh, background. Uh, so, uh, uh, I think it was not quite uh, fortunate or wise uh, to organize uh, uh, a new army from this personnel. Uh, 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 very often uh, we uh, hear that during the career government the Minister of War declared that I do not want to see another uh, Hungarian army anymore. Uh, it is also indeed true that the majority of the Hungarian troops uh, uh, returned uh, unorganized and What's more, uh, very many people were taken prisoner of war, uh, and uh, 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 several hundred thousands of Hungarian soldiers without any conflict were taken as prisoner of war in Italy. Uh, and um, uh, the, this number uh, 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 of prisoners of war uh, uh, was the reason why the remaining army was not suitable to defend the country. And this is the reason why they decided to recruit new members. Uh, they wanted to recruit young people and volunteers. But let's be realistic, after a long war, uh, there is hardly any chance to be able to find volunteers. Uh, there was another idea. They wanted to give land to those who uh, were willing to join the Hungarian army. Unfortunately, the Hungarian nobility and uh, gentry did not want uh, to distribute uh, their lands. So that's the reason why the organization of the army was not really successful. The same happened in 1919 when in March uh, 
the Hungarian People's Republic uh, was established and uh, uh, <coughs> the Republic, the country, uh, did not have uh, an effective uh, army uh, at that time either. Uh, during the government uh, of uh, Károly, uh, all generals and high-ranking officers had to retire, and by April 1919, when they tried to uh, uh, reorganize the army, it turned out that 8,000 officers were missing. Uh, 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 nevertheless, uh, in April, May, uh, on a volunteering uh, basis, uh, uh, which was not quite successful, uh, but you know, according to the socialist uh, uh, ideology, uh, 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 they thought uh, that uh, the proletariat would rather fight against uh, the ruling class than joining the army, but that was not true. Uh, and, uh, 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 when the Hungarian army uh, invaded uh, the former uh, northern part of Hungary now belonging to the Czechoslovakia, we can think about the fact whether they reoccupied that uh, former Hungarian uh, part of Hungary or they uh, entered into a special military operation with another socialist uh, republic. Uh, uh, I would like to mention a few names uh, whose career did not stop in 1919. Uh, 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 Henrik Wert, uh, Ferenc Szombathelyi, serving in the Red Army, uh, Vilmos Nagy, uh, Minister of uh, Defense, uh, uh, Janos Vörös, uh, uh, then Korakovic Demeter, head of uh, the intelligence, uh, 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 and that guy who later becomes Prime Minister of Hungary. So these people served in the Red Army, and that was not a problem later during the Horthy period. But as it turns out that, uh, as Kubela said, the Council Republic of uh, Hungary, the leadership of that is not uh, on the field of integrity, and it is not time for the Hungarian territory that is going to be liberated, but the Slovakian Council Republic is established, then a major part of the officers, like uh, Rudolf Andorka, Gustav Henje, just to name a few from the 1940s, they step out from the service, they say that they are ill, and there is an alternative an option because in June 1919 the Karoi Yula counter government uh, uh, mil minister of uh, military will be Miklos Horty and they uh, proclaim the call that a national army has to be established in which uh, those uh, officers uh, will be uh, called who have not uh, who are younger than 50 and whose actual served in the war and based on that I would like to establish the military but it is also typical for the age that uh, for, for the period that uh, they should bring a uh, uniform weapons and um, supplies for three days so this is the start of the national military which after the fall of the council republic uh, is and they can move into the Transdanubia this is about 3,500 people because the Red Army is outnumbering them but after the fall a major part of the soldiers would go home or they will be captivated by the Romanians and those who stay they will simply merge into the 3,000 or so army and from this army or from this uh, pool they try to uh, merge 
push it into an army and the idea is actually emerging in the minds of uh, the military leadership also that that kind of uh, spirituality or that kind of discipline will have to be restored in this army which existed in the time of the monarchy. So one thing is that an officer should not enter into politics. Of course they did so and I'm not thinking of the special uh, units but the various because all the atrocities, uh, unlawful atrocities, are committed against the officers of uh, the Council Republic, but of course all these uh, will be then annulled, all these verdicts actually, but you know, and sometimes they can be uh, given mercy and they can actually continue with their activities. But suffice to say that the national army will imply or some other uh, military members as well, but how big the, the, the army can be. So the Versailles Treaty, uh, the Trianon Treaty, but I think it can be called as a dictate. It is a peace uh, treaty which for Hungary is a dictate because it is not only the fact that, uh, that there were no negotiations negotiations whatsoever. Conditions were given, just like in Moscow in 1941, whether we accept it or not. We had no other options. If you do not accept it, then there's no way forward. So anyway, getting back to the military, we have to de develop the military. So when in 1919 they see that the chief of the military is a person on whom one can develop, then the idea comes that this military can march in instead of the Romanian forces that will march out. So this is what the Budapest march in will take place. But before the chief of the military, Horty, says some warning announcements that nobody can commit any atrocities against the Jews, uh, everything has to be concluded without politics. And also the loose morale has to be restored. So for example, the in their free time, uh, uh, as they criticize, uh, the officers are sitting around with uh, kind of uh, ladies uh, that are of different profession, and this is not not nice. But anyway, Hungary would need about 8,000 military at that time in order to um, operate normally. It is uh, a, a bit uh, less than it was before the First World War. Still, it would not be enough for a fight if there was need to enter into fight with the neighboring uh, countries. But um, uh, the law allows for 35,000 troops and one twentieth can be official officers, which is about 1,700, and uh, some um, lieutenant officers can be like 2,000 or so. If we round these uh, figures, and hopefully they will not put an invalid there, and it is also very well defined what kind of weapons they can have uh, and also the guns for each 1,000 uh, troops, they can have 1,100 and 500 guns how much munitions can have, and of course, although Hungary at that time does not have any sea, but uh, the river fleet, the Danube fleet, which has also disappeared, unfortunately, because here we talk about the national army and the uh, education of the officers can take only place uh, at the military academies and there can be at a maximum 100 uh, students learning at one uh, in, in one year and those who want to enter into a job like being a professional uh, soldier they have to offer 12 years of service 
but there are not too many volunteers who would like to do it. And also, the economic situation of the country would not allow to have so many soldiers. And even after some conscriptions, there were much more soldiers in the army, you know, uh, before the First World War, there were like 100,000, but then they are going to, the, these are going to be disarmed. Now, uh, you know, the peace treaty would also say as to which weapons should not be used. At that time, of course, Hungary did not have any aviation force, but they were not even allowed to do it. Or the gendarmerie, the Minister of uh, the Military and the Internal Affairs would be in charge of the army. And of course, in, 197, in 1922, Article 7 has to be created so that the gendarmerie should fall under the Ministry of Interior and Military, so this should not be counted as a part of the 35,000 military troops. And of course, they cannot have a chief of uh, staff either. So what the predecessors of the security officers today, who were quite knowledgeable at that time in saying that this military force would not even be suitable for protecting Hungary for two or three days if the neighboring country's military would start attacking the country. Nevertheless, after the peace treaty, of course, the name of the military should be changed, so it should be the Hungarian National Military will take over the name the Hungarian Royal Military Force, which then it is going to be sustained for 20 more years. And then, of course, these are renamed into various uh, brigades, but actually it's the geographical names that are important, Budapest, Sekes, Fejervás, Szeged, Miskolc, Debrecen, because there were these commander ships. But of course, not even in the beginning of 1920s, we did not have 35,000 troops, and which creates a major problem, and this should not be forgotten, that when they start to shrink the officer's number, which was 1,750, and if you look at how many Hungarian citizens serve in that and how many foreigners, you can see that a very special rivalry, or rather, controversion would uh, uh, develop. And of course, among the officers, this is about 50 50 percent when I was looking at some samples. And of course, the homemates, the patriot uh, militaries enjoyed uh, more privileges. But on the other hand, one had to hide all those officers who they would have liked to use at a later stage of the military developments. And, of course, there are now hiding some military officers. First and foremost, uh, they were putting them into various sports activities at the National Physical Education Council, where it is um, a, a, a brigadier general who is always the head of that, and, of course, the various ranks. Uh, named um, abbreviated at the time Roska, R O S K E, or some chief advisors. But of course, they were wearing uniforms but, and getting the same salary, but they could be hidden from the Entente. Because if Hungary meets all the obligations that are set against it, then of course the military control commission is uh, monitoring it, which is working in Hungary, and they can actually check everything if it is being reported and if what they think that this is uh, important. And really, uh, the, for, the Entente is keeping an eye on that, so that's why it is not by accident that uh, 
the, when a department is uh, g getting the order as to where the commission wants to, what the com commission wants to visit the next day early so then really if they go to visit a barrack they are really as many soldiers as are registered if there are any single gun more than it they should have and of course then the jokes are all around this is for example all the military the aviation uh, military equipment like airplanes that are disassembled and certain part of it like the engine or the wings are stored in different places of the country but at the same time the whole country looked at this military force they thought will be the part and parcel of the revision activities and at that time actually all the Hungarian society was united in one thing namely in rejection the peace treaty of uh, Trianon the, or the peace dictator of Prianon and try to they wanted to restore everything let's get back everything well this was also a slogan but the realistic uh, uh, people said that maybe we should request to be given everything back and attain a partial re institution but actually Hungary was very far from from that but why we had to wait 20 years well it's another question in order to hide uh, those people of course the the military chiefs thought that there was a military heads of uh, of a chief of um, heads and the ministry of military had also a uh, division seventh which was in charge of all the military force but of course they were also thinking of how to replace the uh, military and the act number five which was the sports act which was about the leventa for those uh, young people between 12 and 21 who are out of school but they had to participate in certain formal trainings like various uh, handling of the guns, uh, physical activities and so on. So finally, and from January the 4th, 1970, uh, 1922, so all the military officers and the red and white officers became united because it has to be added as well, because the white officers who departed from Seged, there were very few, because Seged only gives an alternative to the officers from June 19. Uh, but those who were volunteering for a 12-year-long service, their military career was not at all uh, uh, violated. Like, uh, but there were some officers like Karoly Berger, who was more red than he should have been, and uh, there was some other one who said that they were. Re they, they were uh, who, who resigned and they who worked together with the red uh, more in a more willingly than he should have and uh, Gustav who served near Stromfeld and who said when it was about the Red Army when he was interrogated that the colonel's idea was that the red color should change to pink first and then uh, white but anyway they should all uh, fight for the national goals and it was actually the later royal army that was setting the goal that if Hungary became so small it should not get smaller at all but if chances are given then they should be able to perform the revision and later on, of course, uh, by the end of the 1930s, the army developed into an army counting more than 30,000 
troops, but even that was not sufficient enough for the uh, military. Thank you so much for the professor for this excellent presentation. Now we are through to very important powers, uh, legislation and the military, and still we're talking about the modernization and the continuation, the various uh, losses and the violation of the legal order for the recovery uh, one had to come to terms in each and every area and the taking stock was not only meaning taking stock of the people but the industry, agriculture, water management and all the other sectors.